Right now, we're going to look at five things every Photoshop user should know. Hey, Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. And today we're going to look at five things that every Photoshop user should know. I'm curious, how many of these do you know? Number one, how to get rid of the splash screen. So the splash screen is fine, right? I mean, we can open existing images, we can create new documents. But what if I want to start with something from the library? Hmm. If I want to start with something from the library, I've got to maybe create new first, create a document, then I can get Photoshop's interface. The minute I close it, I'm back to the screen. So it acts like a gatekeeper that keeps you away from Photoshop. So how do you get rid of it? Well, it's quite easy. Just go under preferences. Under preferences, we can choose general. And then you'll see this option. It says auto show the home screen. Turn that off. Now let's set create new. And when we're finished, we close it. And when we launch Photoshop, we don't have to see that dreadful screen anymore. We can go straight to our work. So one of the things we do a lot in Photoshop is we fill shapes, we fill selections, we fill things. And I've seen people do it so painfully, like painting in to fill something when you can do it in a single click. Right now, I'm gonna show you several ways of filling shapes and objects. All right, one of the ways is to use the paint bucket tool, which to be honest, I never use, but it's under the gradient, you'll see this paint bucket. Let's choose a color, maybe red, click OK. And now with the paint bucket, we can click on these areas and it's going to fill. Now, if you want to click them all together, turn off contiguous and then just click and it'll fill them all at once. Contiguous will enable you to do isolated areas separately. All right, that's great. So what about, let's do this one. So if I wanna fill with the foreground color, I need to just hit the option delete key and that would be alt backspace on Windows. That fills with the foreground color. All right, let's set a different background color, maybe something like a blue. And if I wanna fill with the background color now, that's command delete on Mac control backspace on windows but what if i want to preserve the transparency so you know rather than having to go in here control click to make a selection and then fill i can do all of this in one go watch this make sure nothing is selected all we need to do is add the shift key so for the foreground option delete but hold down shift preserves the transparency for the background color, so that'd be Control Shift Backspace on Windows, Command Shift Delete on Mac, and notice that it preserves all the transparency. Now, if you want to quickly get to the Fill dialog box, Shift Delete or Shift Backspace on Windows, and this gets us to the Fill dialog, where we can quickly fill with black, white, or gray. Or if you want to choose a color, just choose color. We can select any color we want. This is also where we can fill with content aware and other things. And if you're liking what you see so far, do me a favor, hit that like button. That's the thumbs up. It helps the algorithm discover our videos and also subscribe if you haven't yet and turn on all notifications. The third thing that everyone should know inside of Photoshop is how to work with inverted layer masks and also to invert them and not fill them with black. Let me demonstrate. There's lots of times you would want to create an inverted layer mask. So for example, I wanted to do some adjustments maybe with some levels. So if I go here and I apply in a levels adjustment, this creates a new layer. And of course this will work on any layer, but I want to just brighten this up. So we're just brightening it up very quickly, but I don't want to apply it to the whole image. I just want to apply it to a little bit here on this mountain. Well, what you want to do is invert that layer mask. So if we hit control I, the layer mask now turns black, means it's completely hidden. Now I just need to paint with white in the areas I want to show this layer mask. So say I create a brush here and then I paint, notice wherever I paint now, we're just adding that 
light. So essentially by inverting that mask, we can paint the mask where we want. Now let me undo this. Here's a mistake that a lot of people make. A lot of people, instead of inverting the mask, they fill it with black. So let's select that mask and I'm gonna fill it with black. Remember the keyboard shortcuts, background, which means control or command. So that's command, delete. Now we've filled it with black, right? So this should be the same thing, wouldn't it? Wouldn't you think it'd be the same thing? Well, here's the problem. If I unlink this mask and I move it, notice we get this edge. If I resize my document later, I'm going to end up with this edge. Okay, that is a problem. Watch this. With that white mask, I decide to invert it. Control or Command I. Unlink it. Now let's drag it. Notice there's no edge now. So what's happened is we've made the entire mask a black mask instead of taking a white mask and just filling the visible area. So never fill that mask with black. Always hit Control I, Command I to invert it and then you won't get those weird edges appear in your images. So the fourth thing everyone should know about Photoshop is their scratch disk. It's like putting the right gas in your car to get the best performance. So if we go up under Photoshop preferences and you'll see all the different preferences and under one of these, you'll see one called scratch disks. In this case, I only have a single drive attached to my machine. So you'll see that this is turned on. However, you often have more than one drive, particularly something like Mac Pro or something like that, and you'll see different drives. What you wanna do is take this little check mark and turn it on to the fastest drive that you have. And turn off the slow drive. When you're working in Photoshop and you're doing very computational heavy things like running filters and things like that, Photoshop goes in there and it uses RAM, which is random access memory. It's very fast. But eventually Photoshop's going to run out of RAM and instead of using the RAM, it now starts to write that to a hard drive. So your hard drive now is used as RAM, which is called scratch disk. So it takes a section of your hard drive and then distributes that memory on there and uses it to perform these different tasks. Sometimes you can use 10 times the amount of scratch disk space as your document size. So you can see why a slow drive or a cluttered drive can really slow things down. So if you have a faster drive such as the NVMe or an SSD drive and you set that as the scratch disk, it's a faster drive, which means that Photoshop can work faster. And by the way, if you ever see a message that says scratch disk is full, you can free up memory. Just go up under edit, then go down to purge. You can just hit all and that will purge everything out of memory and free it up so maybe you can run that filter or save your document. I've even had times when I couldn't save the document. All right, and the fifth one I'm going to talk about is working with clipping groups. Clipping groups are a non-destructive way of you putting objects inside other objects. And we use the shape that we used before. So I'm just going to create a new layer and let's make this big shape in the middle there. Awesome. That's great, right? Now, what if I decide I'm going to put that layer above and I only want it to fit within that shape? I could control click, make the selection, go in here and then hit a layer mask. But if I decide to reposition the image, notice it's kind of cut out. So that could be tricky. All right, let's do a better way. So when you're above a layer, and you want to put this inside the transparency of the layer underneath. Go between the two layers, hold down the Alt or the Option key, you'll see this little arrow, click, and now it clips that layer within the other layer. The other advantage to this is, look, I can move it around. It's non-destructive, so I can reposition this easily without losing anything. So I hope you found these five tips useful. Let me know in the comments underneath how many of these tips did you already know and if you learned anything new. And by the way guys, thanks for watching. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button right now and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. And by the way, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.